10,000, the most sought after round in COD Zombies history. Despite its insignificance in the speedrunning community, it is widely regarded as one of the most known records in gaming history. So why is this round so recognizable? What makes it so unique? How come it's so sought after? And why is this considered one of the most challenging records ever? On November 11th, 2008, the first game to introduce zombies, Call of Duty World at War, was launched. While unknown to the public, the zombies mode Treyarch had developed was hidden and could only be unlocked by completing the campaign. Once the player finished the campaign, they'd be put in the map called Nocturne Tone. This was the first zombies map and would be one out of four that were released during World at War's lifetime. The other three that were launched were Varukt, Shinonuma, and Duris. However, the third map, Shinonuma, would become the most significant map out of the four. The reason the map was so significant is because it was the final map to have 24 zombies around. On paper, this does not sound like an issue, although it would lead to one of the biggest changes in the game mode. See, Treyarch introduced a new wonder weapon called the Wunderwaff. This weapon contained 3 shots in its magazine and 15 in its reserve. Despite the lack of ammo, each shot dealt infinite damage and killed 10 zombies. On top of the Wunderwaff, Shionuma introduced dogs which are a boss round that incurs every 4-5 to five rounds and gave the player max ammo once a round was defeated. These two additions and 24 zombies around made the perfect mixture for broken high rounds. In fact, it was so broken it allowed players to get to round 1000 within under 9 hours. Because of this, the next and final map, Duris, was changed to add more zombies the higher a player goes in rounds. However, Shinonuma remained the same, meaning players could continue to reach round 1000 plus. Despite records being insignificant at the time, Shinonuma, for the first time, would create competition within the community to reach a higher round. Matter of fact, it got so competitive, four days after the map release, Sizzle Steps, also known as Viper, would achieve round 123 making this the first mainstream record in the Zombies community. Despite the community being small, this record would inspire many to break it. This was mostly due to the round sizzle steps achieved, but also the strategy he used. The strategy involved the player standing in the communications room and keeping two huts closed, storage and doctor's quarters. These were just two out of four huts on Chinonuma, the other two being fishing hut and the communications room. While the huts did not have a significant effect on the gameplay, they did contain four perks. These four perks were Juggernaut, Double Tap, Speed Cola, and Cook Revive. Although Double Tap and Cook Revive are near useless on the map, this means Juggernaut and Speed Cola are the only two perks a player needs. Juggernaut allows a player to survive up to four hits instead of two, and Speed Cola allows a player to reload their guns twice as fast. Anyhow, the reason Sizzle stood in the communications room was so he could force the zombies to spawn in the area he was in. This allowed the zombies to spawn only in front and beside of him, meaning he could activate the electro trap within the room to kill the zombies. Also, the reason Sizzle kept the storage and doctor quarter huts closed was because of spawn control. Well, that's what he thought. See, because the zombies only spawn in the main building where you start and the communications area, this meant they won't spawn anywhere else on the map. However, Sizzle did not know this which explains why he kept the doctor's quarters closed. Despite this, keeping the two huts closed wasn't an issue because 8 days later, Sizzle would achieve round 439, beating his previous record by 316 rounds. Surprisingly, Sizzle changed up the strategy he used. Instead of using his own strategy, he used a different strategy created by Vans. This strategy involved the players standing on the bridge near the flogger traps, the zombies would spawn behind them. Then the player would run into the main building and shoot their wonder waff. While simple, the strategy was very effective. Compared to Sizzle's strategy, Vans' strat saved 30 minutes per 100 rounds. Since Vans' strategy was simple and fast, it would inspire him to break Sizzle's record. Two weeks later, Vans would break Sizzle's record by reaching round 2032, making this the first known round 1000 and 2000 on Shinonuma. In fact, Vans record was so impressive it froze on 2032, roughly 20 hours into the game. 
See, to understand why Vans game froze, we have to look at the time he achieved this record, which was July 7th, 2009. This meant Vans was limited to the consoles he could choose. Besides PC, Vans only had access to the Xbox 360 Premium, Xbox 360 Core, or more commonly referred to the Xbox 360 Arcade, and the Xbox 360 Elite. Now, he only chose a PlayStation 3 as it was the only console he had at the time. At first, this does not sound like an issue because Vans could have chosen any of these consoles and he would have been set, right? Well, not exactly. See, PS3 World at War had some issues. The game would constantly get massive frame drops and usually always stayed at roughly 40 to 50 frames per second, and it was known to freeze a lot. Now, if I did my research right, World at War was developed for the Xbox 360, though they imported the 360 version onto PS3, which would explain why the FPS was lower and why the game froze often. Unfortunately for Vans, the Xbox 360 didn't help much either. See, the old Xbox 360s had a major problem with disc scratching and overheating, which meant it was common for games to crash, especially on World at War. Also, these consoles were never built for high rounding. The reason I say this is because past 15 to 20 hours, the game usually froze due to overheating or disc issues. So, if you wanted to beat the record, you had to be very lucky. Surprisingly, that did not stop players from attempting to beat Van's record. If you remember, I mentioned Sizzle's 439 record. Well, three days after Van's got round 2032, Sizzle would achieve round 2147 making this the shortest held record in Zombies at the time. Also, this video would gain over 400,000 views on YouTube, making it the first COD Zombies record to gain almost half a million views. To add on top of that, Sizzle ended its game because any round higher than 2147 would not show up on the PS3 leaderboards. The reason why the leaderboards cannot go any higher than this number is due to the game being coded in 32-bit, which has a maximum signed integer of roughly 2,147,483,640. However, the leaderboard shortens the 32-bit limit into 2,147, which explains why the leaderboards cannot go any higher than this number. So, because players only cared about console leaderboards, Sizzle ended his game on this round. Then the competition stopped. For the next three years, not a single player could get near Sizzle's record. Although, in late 2011, a popular Zombies player, Yodi Slayer, would attempt to reach round 1337. Wait, why am I talking about a round 1337 game when the record was 2147? Well, I said Yodi Slayer was a popular Zombies player. Due to this, Yodi would inspire many to reach high rounds on Shinonuma. The reason for this was because high rounders usually never, and unfortunately still get barely any recognition. So to see a popular player going for round 1000 was insane to the casual audience. Furthermore, Yodi showed his failed attempts which was quite uncommon. Due to this, Yodi showed that with enough determination and practice, a player could reach their goal. And he did. Yodi finally achieved 1337. Although it wasn't until late 2013, Yodi's 1337 game had a huge impact on the zombies community. On Wednesday, October 23rd, 2013, Brian Joseph Rickard, also referred as Yodi Slayer, was out drinking with his friends Ryan and Ashley. Because all three were believed to be intoxicated, Brian entered his car and climbed in the driver's seat while Brian and Ashley entered the other seats. Once all three friends entered the car, it is believed they thought of outrunning a train, unfortunately going with the plan. At approximately 2 a.m., Brian and his friends tried to outrun a CS422 train engine which was traveling at 60 miles per hour. Eventually, Brian and his friends made it to the train crossing, but then slowed down as a sign of hesitation. Moments later, the train would collide into the broadside of the truck cab. New details have been released on a train accident in Vigo County that claimed the life of three people. NBC2's Morgan Moore spoke with officials about the crash, and she joins us now in the newsroom with the latest. Morgan? Well, Tom and Sydney, police have released the names of the three who were killed early this morning. Brian Rickard and Ryan Cook, both of Terre Haute, and Ashley Pugh of Illinois, were pronounced dead on the scene. After, their after the truck they were in tried to outrun a train on Rio Grande Avenue near Gallagher Road. Police did find open containers of alcohol in the truck and say speed and alcohol could be a factor in the crash. 
According to officials, the lights and gates were working at the time of the incident. Brian and one passenger believed to be in the passenger seat were ejected from the vehicle, while the third passenger, believed to be in the back seat, were partially ejected through the windscreen of the truck. All three died immediately upon impact. Obviously, this shocked the community. Within one day after the accident, hundreds of tributes were made. Hell, big YouTubers such as Mr. Dalek JD and Syndicate made tribute videos to Yodi. Furthermore, community dedicated tributes such as custom maps were made to honor his death. Because of this, I'd like to give a moment of silence to all three victims of this terrible accident. Thank you. As influential as Yodi Slayer was, there are a few world records that were achieved before his death. On August 29, 2012, Legit Gamer 360 would achieve round 2150, beating the record by a whopping three rounds. Unsurprisingly, Legit Gamer was influenced by Yodi to beat this world record. In fact, Legit Gamer used Yodi Slayer's strat, which was an advanced version of Van's strategy. Instead of standing on the bridge near Flogger, Yodi stood right beside the door which leads to the doctor's quarters. This forced the zombies to spawn in the main building as well as the flogger area. However, the zombies never spawn in the communications area which is perfect for a safe strategy. Due to this, Legit Gamer was able to achieve round 2150, the first time anyone had beaten the record in over 3 years. Also, this record would break a dry streak for Shinonuma Records. Almost 5 months later, the Kyrie 78, a fairly known World at War player who would eventually break the Nocturne and Tone world record in 2014, would achieve round 2156 on Shinonuma, beating the previous world record by an astonishing 6 rounds. Just like all the other records, Kyrie would use Van's original strategy since it was faster than Yodi's version. As much as I want to discuss this record, there isn't much to talk about besides a record becoming the most viewed one on YouTube. 11 months later, the KSR Chronicles would achieve round 3000, finally putting an end to an amazing 9 round difference across 3 records. Furthermore, KSR Records became the first game in over 4 years to nearly beat the previous record by over 1000 rounds. So, to say the least, this record was pretty significant for its time. Help. KSR played the game over a course of 6 days, which lasted roughly 50 hours. Well, that's what KSR said. Realistically, it probably took him 35 to 40 in-game hours to reach this round. Still, that's pretty impressive. On top of that, this record would create a new era for Shinonuma. The era was titled the Shinonuma Craze, or shortened to the 2014 Shinonuma Craze. In total, 5 records would be achieved on this map within just half a year. The first being round 4,365, achieved by Xbeer on May 10th, 2014. Yeah, for the first time in almost 5 years, the previous world record was beaten by over 1,000 rounds. In addition to the 1,000 round difference, XP ran an advanced version of Van's strategy. Instead of standing on the bridge, then running to the building, XP activated the flogger, making the strategy faster and safer. This would eventually be called the Flogger strategy. Obviously, this had a significant impact on high rounders who wanted to get the world record on the map due to a brand new strategy. However, you needed to be extremely dedicated to achieve the record. At round 4000, it takes roughly 40 hours. So, for the extra 1000 rounds, it'll take 10 hours. Thankfully, players could pause their game, though grinding 40 hours of the same thing over and over would demotivate many players. Nevertheless, that didn't demotivate every player. Remember when I said 2014 started the Shinonuma craze? Well, because XP achieved round 4,365, it meant players were just 635 rounds away from 5,000, the halfway mark to round 10,000. Obviously, this was huge within the community. So, who was going to achieve the first 5,000? If anyone had a high chance, it was Zombie Slayer Germany. Despite being unknown in current times, Zombie Slayer Germany was quite big back in the day. In fact, he is argued as one of the greatest World at War players because he achieved the first round 100 on World at War Darius ending a 6 year long battle of attempts from many players. So, it's pretty obvious Zombie Slayer Germany was a perfect player to attempt the first round 5000. And he did. 
Starting around June of 2014, he would start multiple attempts to become the first to reach round 5000. Then, on June 28, 2014, Zombie Slayer would achieve a new world record. I know what some of you are asking. Why aren't you telling us what round he achieved? Well, he achieved a round no one expected. Yep, instead of achieving round 5000, Zombie Slayer Germany would down to a zombie near the flogger trap 52 hours in, just shy of 5000 by 471 rounds. As unfortunate as the down was, Zombie Slayer Germany was able to add one more record to the countless of other ones he held, although that wouldn't last for long. In the process of Zombie Slayer grinding Shinonuma, a fairly known player, the Yaoi Wizard, was doing his own attempts in the background. Well, it's safe to say those attempts paid off because on July 26, 2014, just over 5 years since Shinonuma was released, the Yaoi Wizard would achieve round 5000. In addition, the Yaoi Wizard did not end his game because he wanted to continue further. Due to this, the first known comment referencing round 10,000 was written by Awkwardly Sneaky, another semi-popular zombie player back in the day. As such, this encouraged the Yaoi Wizard to reach a higher round. But then, on round 5524, this happened. This is gonna jack those As you can see, the game has frozen, so it's game over, there's nothing to do about that. Which is a shame, because I was looking forward to doing the live streams and stuff like that. But there is some positives to focus on, this is the highest round of all time. Just 524 rounds after the Yaoi Wizard achieved round 5000, his game froze. As unfortunate as the freeze was, the Yaoi Wizard got what he wanted, the first round 5000. The same could be said for the community too. Why play now when a player just achieved everyone's dream, round 5000? Consequently, any attempts to break the record were halted. For the next days, weeks, and eventually months, Almost nobody was up to go for the record, until Santa's Bananas came along. Compared to other players, Santa's Bananas was not the best zombie player, nor a recognizable player within the community. In fact, almost nobody knew about him until he started grinding Shinonuma in December of 2014. Despite not being the best zombies player, there was one thing Santa's had. It was luck. I know what some of you are asking, how can luck be better than skill? Well, there's a few things you need to understand. The first is how badly coded Shinonuma was. Remember when I was explaining how the old PS3 had major FPS drops and would constantly freeze? The same thing would happen to the Xbox 360 Slim, which was purposely designed to run games longer without freezing and overheating issues. So how come Shinonuma froze on the best console for its time? Well, you have to understand, the Yaoi Wizard's game took him over 52 hours. Furthermore, the Yaoi Wizard used a flogger trap. While efficient, the frame drops the trap would create about 40 hours in was terrible. In fact, the frame drops were so bad it could cause a player to freeze. Obviously, you needed to be very lucky with the freezes, but that wasn't the only issue. The second major issue was the dog rounds. See, there is a bug on the map where, instead of the dogs taking 5 hits to kill you with Jug, Sometimes they would kill you in just one hit. Yup, as unfortunate as it is, this is a reality of Shinonima. Thus, getting lucky was required to achieve the record, which is perfect for Santa's Bananas. While the exact date is unknown, Santa's Bananas would start a game in early December that would revolutionize Shinonima forever. Round 7,115. What the fuck? In just one year, Shinonuma went from round 3,000 to round 7,115, a 4,115 round difference. On top of that, Santa's Bananas achieved the second biggest round difference on Shinonuma. To say this shocked the community is an understatement. Hell, I think D Frenzy's reaction said it the best. I just wanted to give like an honorable mention to Santa's Bananas for basically crushing the previous world record. Like whenever I started up this Shinonuma game, myself and Vsat, 
were playing Shinonuma, and by the time we got to like round 3,000, Santa's Bananas was already on round 4,000, and we're like, what the heck? Like, who is this guy? And VSAT ended up like game overing or committing suicide, something like that, around like 3,000. But I kept going, and um, I just within like two or three days i was just you know so far behind santa's bananas because this guy was just grinding out like rounds like putting in 12 to 14 15 hours a day and it was just crazy because you know myself like i just you know i couldn't do that anymore and i was playing like you know maybe six seven hours a day something like that and that felt like a grind for me so um yeah he ended up getting the world record at like around seven thousand one hundred and 15 or something and then he ended up dying on dog rounds which were the hardest part about the map by the way if you guys didn't know dog rounds are very difficult um well actually not very difficult what am i talking about but yeah compared to the normal rounds the normal rounds it's almost impossible to die on and um sometimes because world at war is really glitchy you can die in like two to three dog bites just just because yeah the game says so <laughs> What if I told you I lied about the buggy dog rounds? Would you believe me? Yes? Maybe? No? Doesn't matter because I did lie. See, the dogs deal 40 damage per hit on World at War Shinonuma. However, instead of healing 40 damage after 1 to 2 seconds, the game only regenerates 5 health points per second taking a total of 8 seconds to regenerate from one dog bite. This information was originally found by Sleepy Taylor, who made a well-made video explaining how Juggernog and dog bites work on Shinonuma. So, if you could please check him out, that would be highly appreciated since I think you can learn a lot from his video. Anyway, because the player only regenerates 5 health points per second after bitten by a dog, the dog rounds themselves can be really tricky. This explains why Santa's banana is down at around 7,115. Had players known about this information, Santa's bananas could have continued further. Though, that did not matter because the frenzy was also in the game, playing right beside Santa's bananas. While insignificant in modern times, back in 2014, having two players competing side by side for the world record was uncommon. In addition, Santa's bananas and the frenzy were streaming their games live on Twitch. Evidently, this was big for the zombies community, especially the casual side of the community. The reason these two games were huge for the casual community is due to high rounds not being discussed on this side of the community. Because of this, seeing round 7000 was insane to the casual audience. Unfortunately, this did more harm than good. See, round 7000 is impressive if you don't count the other maps and games that exist. As an example, when Black Ops 1 was released, it introduced a very iconic map called Kino der Toten. Roughly four years after Kino was released, High Round Zombie players, or more commonly called High Rounders, pushed the map to its absolute limits. Once a High Rounder played roughly 75 hours, the game would reset. The reason this happens is because of the 32-bit limit. If you remember earlier in the video, I mentioned how the 32-bit number affected PS3 leaderboards in such a way it would not count any round higher than 2147. Unsurprisingly, the 32-bit limit had a major effect on World at War and Black Ops 1. Instead of the number limiting the leaderboards, the number would limit how long you could play. So how is that the case when Zombies does not have an official ending? Well, there's a thing called an entity. An entity is an object or a sound and will add one entity every 50 milliseconds towards a 32-bit number. As an example, Shinonuma has a base set of 292 entities. Essentially meaning every 50 milliseconds, 292 entities are counted towards a 32-bit limit. This is what causes a reset and explains why players have to play a strategy as fast as possible to reach a higher round, because they will reset roughly the same time as the current world record holder. Though that does not answer the most asked question. Wouldn't Shinonima be harder because it takes up to 100 hours till the game resets? No. The reason for this is because in 2014, nobody had hit the reset on Shinonima, meaning you never had to worry about speedrunning, only surviving. Furthermore, Shinonuma only had 24 zombies around, while Kino der Toten increased the volume of zombies the higher you go up per round. So, this explains why common misconceptions of Shinonuma being harder than other maps due to the round number is frequent within the casual community. If there's anything to be learned here, never judge a book by its cover. Well, 
In this sense, never judge a map by its cover. Nevertheless, let's get back on track. When the frenzy was on round 5,500, Santa's bananas died on 7,115. This gave frenzy a better chance of achieving the world record because he no longer had competition. Roughly three days after Santa's bananas achieved round 7,115, Frenzy would achieve round 7,200, purposely ending his game because he wanted to play Halo, the Master Chief Collection. And Halo, the Master Chief Collection also was coming out while I was in this game, so I decided, eh, you know, I'll just get to round 7,200 and commit suicide because, you know, I kind of want to play some Halo, you know, I want to play some other games, like some new games that I had pre-ordered. Yep, all of that for Halo. As funny as it sounds, Santa's Banana's 3 day hell record would tie the shortest record held on the map. Then, everything stopped. For the next few days, weeks, and months, nobody attempted to break the world record. It didn't help that Call of Duty Black Ops 3 was bringing another chapter in the storyline. When the game was released on November 6, 2015, almost every zombie player, both casual and competitive, flock to the game. So any interest in beating Frenzy's world record was almost non-existent. Then came early January of 2016. A very well-known player named Sith Bass was doing record attempts in the background. Out of the blue, Sith Bass would achieve around 8,000 in early February of 2016, finally breaking Frenzy's record and slowly closing the gap at around 10,000. While the record was amazing, there's one problem with it, and it wasn't the record itself. It was a player. See, Sithbath was a recognizable player in the community, but for the wrong reasons. Instead of getting records legitimately, he got them illegitimately. Starting from late 2011 up to spring of 2016, Sithbath was exposed for modding a round 99 co-op game on Moon, round 100 on Kino Dratone, round 100 on Shinger La, and round 101 on 5, which was thought to be the world record, which turned out to be modded. For the cherry on top, Sithbash was the owner of ZombieWorldRecords.com, the main website that holds every zombie record and world record. Better yet, Sithbass made a video responding to the allegations of him cheating. Unfortunately, the video no longer exists as Sithbass has removed almost every trace of himself from the internet. However, one thing he said in the video went something along the lines like this. I, as the owner of Zombie World Records, and our staff do not encourage nor allow any cheated records on the website. Oh, how ironic. Because of this, every other record achieved by Sith Bass was labeled as cheated or modded, and it remained that way for almost five years. Until January 2021, Sith Bass round 8000 game on Shinonima was looked over by a few staff members on ZWR, eventually coming to the conclusion the game was legit. So, how can that be? Why this record instead of others Sith Bass achieved? Well, this was the only surviving one from Sisbass, and he had full gameplay from round 1 all the way to round 8000. Though, this doesn't answer the big question. Why would Sisbass keep gameplay of this record? While it's not confirmed, I personally believe Sisbass tried to redeem himself by achieving a big record. Instead, Sisbass' plan backfired on him. Because of his previous records being cheated, people assumed his round 8000 game was cheated, even though it wasn't. This brought a lot of hate towards Sisbass and eventually explained why he streamed on a throwaway alt and left the community. As unfortunate as the situation was, Sisbass's supposed cheated world record would stand for a strong year, despite countless of attempts from other players. On May 16th, 2017, Zombies Chronicles was released for Black Ops 3. This was huge for the community as players could play a remastered version of World at War and Black Ops 1 maps. As a result, the community hit its all-time high in content, and it would be regarded as the second golden age of zombies. For some, it was the golden age of zombies. Furthermore, Black Ops 3 wasn't the only game getting attention. In the small community of World at War, legends such as Jim4495 and Dupree were grinding for world records. Dupree would focus on solo high rounds, while Jim4495 would mostly focus on co-ops, one of whom was InstaKiller. Despite being unknown at the time, in early 2017, InstaKiller would develop a small yet friendly following for Machinonuma attempts. Due to this, InstaKiller's following was hoping to see if he could break this bass record, but also achieve the first round 10,000. This would further motivate him to break the world record. Then in April of 2017, 
InstaKiller would finally break SysBass record by achieving around 8,001. However, InstaKiller continued to play, attempting to reach the first 10,000. Round 9,072. 928 rounds from round 10,000. Clearly, this brought a lot of attention towards Insekiller since he was the first player who finally made 10,000 look reachable, though it only remained that way until May of 2017 with the release of Zombie Chronicles. Remember when I explained how almost every player in the Zombies community flocked towards Black Ops 3 when it was released? Yeah, the same thing happened with the release of Zombie Chronicles, essentially removing all interest in achieving the first round 10,000. Moreover, the release of Zombie Chronicles made a huge change within the community. Instead of high rounds getting recognized, Easter egg speedruns started to boom, especially in the casual community. The reason for this was because Easter eggs were more RNG dependent than skill dependent, and they were much faster, usually lasting under an hour compared to high rounds which can last over 50 plus hours, so any interest in high rounds was completely diminished. If you've been in the zombies community for a while, this name might ring a bell. If not, then I'll have to do a little explaining. Claystar was a somewhat popular Zombies YouTuber back in 2016 through 2019, usually making videos such as Top 5s, 10 Types of Zombie Players, and the Worst of Best series. As simple as these videos were, Claystar wanted to try something new. Instead of making simple, yet fun to watch Zombies content, he wanted to attempt something he and other YouTubers had never done before. Achieve the first round 10,000. On March 9th, 2019, Claystar would start his first real attempt at reaching round 10,000. However, instead of attempting to reach round 10,000, Claystar made his goal round 1,000, as he knew he needed practice. Also, to keep himself motivated and his subscribers intrigued, he promised his subscribers a face reveal if he reached round 1,000. Thus, it was time for him to reach his goal. Right off the bat, Claystar's first attempt was going really well. Despite being slower than most players, he reached round 500 in just 6 hours. Although, he wasn't done. He still had 500 more rounds to go. Unfortunately, his run wouldn't last much longer. At round 683, Claystar would run through the flogger trap and down. On paper, this sounds normal because on Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 3 Shinonima, the player will die once they run through the trap when it's on. However, it's different on World at War. If a player buys Juggernaut, they can run and stand in the flogger trap when it's on without dying. Although that changes when a zombie runs through the trap. Instead of just a zombie dying, the player dies as well. The reason this happens is because when the zombie dies in the trap, their body's collision box remains where they died for approximately 1 to 2 seconds. If a player runs through the trap and gets stuck on the collision box, 90% of the time, the player will go down. As simple as it sounds, Claystar did not know this bug existed, and assumed it was the game's fault causing him to go down. However, that did not stop Clay. Just one day later, Claystar would start up another game and reach round 1000 on the second attempt. Catastrophically, this would be short-lived for Claystar. Just like his round 683 game, Claystar would down in the flogger trap. Obviously, Claystar was really pissed off about this when he posted a tweet right after his game. In his tweet, he wrote, It's super frustrating knowing that I have the skill and patience to get a world record, but then this keeps happening. As funny and sad as the tweet is, it would coincidentally lead to one of the biggest discoveries on World at War Shinonima. A user named Carson Plays would respond to Claystar's tweet, giving him a suggestion. The zombie's body block. My advice if you go for it again, only go through the trap when the round is confirmed over. Claystar then replied to the tweet saying, That's also what I was thinking. Owing to the fact this might be true, Claystar launched up a game to test the theory. Then, on round 583, Claystar purposely ran through the trap when the zombies' collision boxes were still there. Surprisingly, he did not die in his first two attempts. Then on his third attempt, he would run through the trap in round 586, which led him to down, confirming this theory. So, he decided to make a video about it. Once the video was released on August 3rd, 2019, Claystar said on August 4th, 2019, he would stream his world record attempts on YouTube 
and Twitch. Then August 4th came. At the start of his attempts, Claystar decided to play safe. The reason for this was because he did not care about his times. He decided to train the zombies in the communications area for the next hour and 10 minutes. He would run the strategy up to round 54, just 10 rounds away from the max zombie spawn rate. From then on, he ran the flogger strategy, essentially making the game more safe and secured, meaning he only had to rely on simple decision making, motivation, and very good luck. With all three of these combined, Claystar found himself on round 500, then 1000, round 2500, and eventually round 5000, the halfway point to 10,000. This is one of the few times a player had reached round 5000 since Instakiller's game. So for the Zombies community and Claystar's subscribers, it was exciting, so he continued on. But then, the unexpected happened. Roughly 7 hours later, Claystar would get a dog on round 5710. At first, this looked like an ordinary dog round, but this time, it wasn't. On the second wave of dogs, one would spawn right in front of Clay, body blocking him, which caused him to get two bites. This wasn't an issue until Clay ran to the bridge and turned around. Once Clay turned around and slowly hesitated, this caused him to get hit two more times. This meant he would have to wait 8 seconds until he recovered from one dog bite. If not, then he would die in just two. Then, Clay started to panic and made the worst decision possible. When the first dog of Way 3 spawned near the front of the bridge, he decided to go to the back of the bridge. At first this sounds like the logical thing to do, but in reality it was the worst thing to do. See, the flogger area is more open than the back of the bridge, which is perfect when you want to keep your distance from the dogs. Though, Clay went to the back of the bridge. This is the worst decision possible as the second dog of Way 3 spawned at the back of the bridge, once again body blocking Claystar. Claystar panicked and shot the dog with this wonder waff. Unfortunately, the bullet did not connect with both dogs and only killed the one in front of him. Because of this, the dog that spawned on the front side of the bridge bit him, causing him to red screen. Once a player gets a red screen, it means any damage taken from a dog or a zombie will instantly down you. It didn't help Clay had no ammo in his Wonder Waff. So, Clay had no other choice but to run into the swamp and pray for the best. Unfortunately, the worst possible scenario happened. He went down. In just 15 seconds, 61 hours played across a span of 7 days went down the drain. Evidently, Claystar stopped playing Shinonuma. Losing nearly 3 days of playtime in just 15 seconds would cause anyone to take a break or quit. Surprisingly, Claystar decided to give Shinonuma one more try. On December 21st, 2019, Clay would start up a game that changed history. At first, the start was slow taking 35 minutes to get the weapon set up, the Wonder Waff, and the PPSH. The reason Claystar chose the PPSH is because in between round 203 and 213, insta-kill rounds start. To understand why insta-kill rounds exist, you have to understand how the zombie's health works. Starting from round 1 all the way to round 203 to 213, the zombie's health increases, however it can only go so high. Remember the 32-bit number? Yeah, the zombie's health tries to go over it, but it can't. So the game forcefully resets the zombie's health back to round 1, making them an insta-kill. Now, there's two things I'd like to note here. First, the reason people chose the PPSH is because it's faster to kill the zombies on the insta-kill with an automatic weapon instead of the Wunderwaff. Instead of the zombie's health increasing every round, it increases every non-dog round, which explains why it happens in between round 203 to 213 instead of round 163 on other maps. Okay, now that I've explained what insta-kill rounds are, let's get on track. After Claystar got his setup, he was ready to go. In roughly an hour and a half, Clay would reach round 100, then insta-kill rounds in 2 hours and 42 minutes. Because he hit insta-kill rounds, he was able to reach round 500 in 5 hours and 36 minutes, round 1000 in 10 hours and 40 minutes, 2525 hours and 48 minutes, then round 5051 hours and 8 minutes, 710 rounds from his personal bus. This was insanely impressive as Claystar became the first and only player holding two 5000s on Shinonuma. Despite holding two round 5000s on Shinonuma, Claystar still wanted to beat the world record and reach round 10,000. Just 7 hours later, Clay would be his personal bus of 5710, achieving round 5711. Though, once again he wasn't done. Three hours later he would achieve round 6,000. 
just over two-fourths of the way to 10,000. Unfortunately, there was one small problem with Clay's game. Instead of playing Xbox 360, Clay was playing on PS3. Despite the riskiness of playing on PS3, there is little reason to panic as Sith Bass, one of the world record holders on the map, achieved around 8,000 on PS3. So, achieving 10,000 was 100% possible. Oh no! Until it wasn't. Roughly one second after Claystar nearly froze from turning on the fogger, he paused his game and waited 10 seconds. This was ridiculously smart as no one had tried pausing their game to save a freeze. Unfortunately, this would not last long. About 5 seconds later, Clay decided to quickly pause his game so he could buffer his game. This was a technique he used earlier in his game to fix or reduce crashes. Unknown to him, he did it in the worst way possible. Instead of looking away from the flogger to increase frames, he buffered his game while looking at the flogger. On just a second pause, his game got a huge lag spike. At least, that's what Clay thought. After 30 seconds, the game still would not unpause, confirming this so-called lag spike was actually a freeze. Unfortunately, the freeze Clay got would freeze any future attempts from him. At the start of 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic would take a turn for the worse. As more and more cases of COVID grew, it eventually forced countries to go into lockdown. While unfortunate for some, this was a dream come true for speedrunners. No time was better than now. Speedrunners could grind more often than they could because they had to stay indoors. Due to this, Zombies became the perfect game to speedrun since they lasted an average of 70 hours. Hell, it was so perfect that me and other speedrunners started to do their own attempts, but it would take a bit until players got anywhere. Until May of 2020, a very unknown player named Riv10 would achieve around 1,802. Not super impressive to the public eye, but for Riv10, this was just the beginning. Roughly two days after his 1,802 game, Riv would start up a game that would change how the public eye viewed him. At the start, Riv's game was similar to Claystar's game, though that would quickly change. In just 1 hour and 15 minutes, Riv would reach round 100, 202 hours and 12 minutes, 505 hours and 8 minutes, then 1000 under 10 hours, and so on. Visibly, Riv's game was going pretty good. In little over a week, he would find himself on round 5000 the halfway point for 10,000. Still, this wasn't super impressive to the public eye. Remember Claystar's game? Yeah, because 5,000 had become so common, barely anyone paid attention. Nonetheless, this did not demotivate Riv. Despite the extremely boring and endurance testing the rounds were, Riv eventually found himself on 6,000, then 7,000, then 8,000, and eventually round 9,000 just 72 rounds away from the world record. Obviously, this started to bring attention towards Riv. This was the second time anyone had reached round 9000. Not only that, if Riv was lucky enough, he could be insert 3 year long record, nearly tying Sizzle Steps longest held record on the map. But then, 40 minutes after Riv achieved round 9000, this happened. After three years and two months, Insta's round 9072 world record was finally broken, giving the crown to Riv10. As awesome as this was, there is one more goal Riv and the whole community wanted, round 10,000, though they would have to wait. 17 minutes after Riv achieved round 9072, he would stop on round 9100 to go to sleep. After last night, Riv decided to play a few hundred rounds as he had work. Despite the stream being short, he would reach round 9301, then pause, making him just 699 rounds away from 10,000. Once again, Riv had to go to bed. Just like the second day, Riv had work again. However, he would push himself to the limits and achieve round 9742, 258 rounds away from 10,000. 
At this point, the community was going wild. Was tomorrow, June 14th, 2020, going to be the day someone hits around 10,000? Maybe. On the fourth and final day, Rib and the community was filled with adrenaline. In just two and a half hours of playtime, Riv could become the first person to hit round 10,000. Because of this, Riv decided to take the smart move and play safe. Unfortunately, this meant he would play slower, but nobody cared about that. All people wanted to see was round 10,000. So, Riv started grinding. Just 33 minutes after Riv achieved round 9,742, he would achieve round 9,800. Then a little under an hour, he would achieve round 9,900. Then 9,910. 9,920, 9,930, and 9,940. 10 rounds away from 9,950. Is Riff going to do it? Will this be the first round 10,000? Of one man who decided to embark on a grand journey to 10,000 rounds in Call of Duty Zombies. No, dude. Fuck. Just 52 rounds away from 10,000, Riv downed. The worst possible case became the reality. Though Riv wasn't alone. A few weeks later, other players would face their own nightmares. No, I just died. Oh, no. No, Lariam has basement. oh no. Ooh, yikes. Yo. Just one month after Riv's game, Lucid Bills 1 would die on round 5387 and Nukaholic would freeze on round 9,139. Despite countless attempts from three players, round 10,000 could not be reached. Though, once again, Riv, Bills, and Nukaholic weren't the only ones struggling. Remember when I said I started doing my own attempts in early 2020? Well, it's safe to say I had a rough start. Because I was freezing so much in the flogger area, I decided to run a different strategy called 2020 Strat. This was an advanced version of Nellan's island spawn created back in 2009. However, instead of standing on the island and then running towards a trap, I decided to stand on the island, let the zombies spawn, then kill them only with the Vunderwaff and PPSH. Surprisingly, this was roughly 2.5 SBH faster than a flogger strategy. Due to this, I assumed a player could run the strategy all the way up to round 12,000 before hitting the reset. Unknowing at the time, I was very, very wrong. If you're just curious. Yeah, turns out 2020 strat froze and aired much more often than the flogger strat. The reason for this was, well, funny enough, playing too fast. Apparently, specifically on World at War Shinonima, if a player plays below 23 seconds per horde, the game has a high chance of crashing. This is part of the reason why 2020 froze so often. Because of this, I decided to switch a flogger. Then, on July 11th, 2020, I would start my own game. After doing a bit of restarts, I ended up getting the PPSH and Thunderbaugh first box. From then on, I opened every single door on the map to remove entities, which would extend my reset. However, I would only get Speed Coal and Juggernaut from the four huts I opened. The reason for this is because Double Tap makes you play slower with the PPSH since you fire the weapon faster, 
causing you to reload more often. And Quick Revive doesn't revive you when you play Solo World at War. Anyway, after I opened all the doors, I went to the Flogger area, though this time I would not activate the Flogger until round 900. The reason for this is so I could play faster for the first 9 hours of the game, then slow down so I wouldn't freeze from playing too fast. From then on, I would use a Flogger trap for the rest of the game. So off I went, dreadful as it was. I would play 1,000 rounds per day. Within my third day of playing, I would beat my old personal best of round 2,558, then 4,000 on the fourth day, 5,000 on the fifth day, then 6,000 on the sixth day, and eventually 7,000 on the seventh day. However, on the eighth day, I would once again face my worst nightmare. On round 7,176, I'd grab a nuke while the flogger was on. This caused my game to stutter for a solid two seconds. Amazingly, my game did not crash. Despite the panic created from this near crash, I had to push forward. Roughly 8 hours after my game nearly crashed, I would reach round 8,000, just 2,000 rounds away from 10,000. Then on the 9th day, I would reach round 9,000, and push myself one extra hour to reach 9,140, becoming the third person to break Insta Killer's round. On day 10, things started to get serious and scary at the same time. Remember when I said I nearly crashed in around 7,176? Well, when I activated the flogger past around 8,000, my frames would sometimes drop so low, it felt like it could crash my game. So to counter this in any way possible, I looked away from the flogger. Fortunately, looking away from the flogger did help with the frame drops just a little bit. However, the chances of my game crashing were still incredibly high, especially since I was 80 plus hours in. So I unpaused my game, started playing, and started praying for good luck. After four grueling hours of playing and praying, I eventually found myself at around 9,500, 448 rounds away from the world record. After 4 more hours I got the world record, but I still had 52 more rounds left to go. Was this it? Am I going to get the world record? Or could this be the greatest round bust in Zombies history? Yes! <laughs> oh my god, dude. 10 <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 11 years after Shino Nemo was released, it finally happened. Though there was one more goal I needed to reach. Remember when I was talking about the reset? Well, if I wanted to make the record harder to beat, I had to hit it. GG, 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 GG. Whoa! After 99 hours and 36 minutes of playing, I finally reset on 10,751, making this the first console reset on World at War and the first time Shinonuma became a speedrun. So, this begs the question Is World at War Shinonuma maxed out? No. See, in my game I achieved round 10,751 before I reset. This round is fairly good, although round 11,000 could be possible. In order for someone to achieve round 11,000, they'd have to achieve round 1,500 plus running 2020 strat and by some miracle, not freeze. If a player makes it this far, then they can switch to flogger. From there, they can run it all the way up to the reset. Though, just like 2020 strat, the player has a high chance of freezing or erroring. In fact, because they ran 2020 strat to 1500, the chances of them freezing are much higher than if they ran flogger the entire game. Also, you have to keep in mind a player has to deal with dog rounds. So is 11,000 possible? Yes, although it is very, very difficult and RNG dependent. Thanks for watching.